Hey guys, it's TCG here, and today we're going over another Vanguard Zero deck. Um, so, with the last profile that we did for Nova Grappler, we got some great support there, we're very grateful for that. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be going over Oracle Think Tank. So, a few of you have asked for this, because apparently in the forums there's not that many Oracle decks, apart from VP farming, because Oracle seems to be the most usual one. Um, Oracle Think Tank is a very strong deck, um, with the ability to put another heal back to your deck, you gain 5 heal triggers, and we all know that heals currently are you know, stomping right now. Um, with the addition of Silent Tom, you can completely just scum your opponent and just say, nice job having 4 PGs in hand, I'm just going to attack for 13, um, no hope for a heal. So. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So I've only got one deck currently, but we're actually just going to look fully through um, some of the cards as well. So we'll start up on my um, actual deck list that I'm going to be using for while we play. So this is everything that I've pretty much unlocked currently. So we'll start with the grade zero. So we will be running Lozenge Magus. Um, Lozenge is a brilliant card. This is the way that you can get the card back to your deck to get five heals in your deck. So Lozenge effect is um, Forerunner. At the end of the turn, that this unit boost, you draw a card and return it to your deck as a heal. Um, so, very, very strong. Um, if you draw this card, you can also call it and keep replenishing and replenishing. So, it is very good. Um, we were lucky enough to pull um, four copies of Kokua. Um, she's on place, look at the top card of your deck, and you get to put it at the top of the bottom. It's a very strong effect right now um further down the line this is not going to be critical but right now it's really nice being able to see if you can get a heal a crit or a draw um is very nice i don't think i, I so yeah, yeah i run four crit five crit on this list um so we've got our four battle sister chocolate she's just a pg i have one sp of that which is fine again it's difficult to have four pgs but how it currently is and the way that i usually do these videos is you with the idea that you're going to be attempting to climb to legend and the realistic fact is if you're going to be playing a deck in legend you should be playing whichever deck you have before pgs off because that is right now the state like the main staple what zero is um it's very difficult to climb very high in legend without four pgs if you do it congrats to you good great job i'm just saying right now you should be trying your hardest to get as many pgs as possible so next we're running um two cycle mages so this is like a slot that can be switched around. Gemini is a very good option, which is an AK vanilla. Um, the reason for that is because Tom then hits for 16, which is a critical number, especially against an um, 11k base if they take one damage that turn. Um, I like Circle May just a little bit early. I like to be able to, for example, if I've just came out of Cocoa and I had to put the card to the bottom, I like to be able to know that I'm what's on top of the deck again by using a Circle May just. Um, this way I can plan my attacks. So if I have an attack that's um, only gonna hit, could hit now or could hit like after, for example, um, then it's brilliant just to know that attack order, etc. And then we're running three Dark Cat. So a lot of lists are running four Dark Cat, I think that's a little bit too much, your opponent. So it's effect is that you draw a card and your opponent draws a card um, when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, which is fine, I guess. Um, drawing a card is great, but the fact that you're giving your opponent a resource is a bit of a downside. It's not so bad if they get a, like, a grade 1 or a 2, or even a 3 from this. 3 is perfect, obviously. But if, um, for example, they draw a PG, you just gave your opponent a free PG, so that you can draw one card and you could have drew nothing. Um, it's a very strong card, but I think 3 is fine. So yeah, um, I was lucky enough to pull one Silent Tom and I've crafted the other. Um, Silent Tom is a staple in the deck, but I also think that 2 is all that you will need. I know that down the line, other um, YouTubers have said that 2 is definitely fine um i think two is fine now you just have to be careful when you use them um, they only really become good late game because it's just pretty much an ak vanilla otherwise so its effect is um during the battle of this unit attacked your opponent sentinels does not activate so for example your opponent's on five damage you attack, they have two grade twos you attack with your right column to the grade two your vanguard to the grade two and then you attack for tom but usually two numbers like 15 and they have to take it even if they have four pgs in hand which it's not fair, but I guess that's how it always was in set one as well. Silent Tom is pretty much a staple, he's very good. Okay, so next we have Maiden of Libra. I only have three of this because my double rares have actually been really, really like tight with um, OTT. So its effect is a grade two uh, Vanguard rear effect, rear guard effect. When this unit attack hits, you can counter plus two to draw one. It's the same effect as Kira from Nova Grappler. Um, it's nice, it's 
we have a grade 3 that's very similar, counter plus 2 to draw 1. Um, yeah, it's good. So next I'm running Mocha. I like Mocha to affect us during your turn if your hand has 3 or more cards, this unit gains 3k. Because we're running 5 draws and because we're playing OTT we're usually drawing a lot of cards, we usually always have 3 cards in hand. I like having an 11k base. Um, it is only during your turn, but we know for a fact that it's going to just be hitting by itself if we decide not to, if we don't have a booster for example. And next we're running um, 4 10k vanillas. I like the 10k vanillas, I've always liked 10k vanillas. There are definitely other options for this which I will be going through. Um, which you can switch that out for, if you may, if you may choose to do that. Um, so we currently only have two of the, one of the main grade threes, which is CEO Amaterasu. Um, she's very strong, um, mainly for a first effect, um, which is during your turn, if your hand has two or more cards, this unit gains 4k. Is that the one I meant? Um, and this is the effect I mean. At the start of your main phase, you soul charge one, look at the top card of your deck and you can put it on the top of the bot. So it's the famous effect is Cocoa. Um, but it's your grade 3 and you get to do it every turn. Um, you have to be careful of milling your deck out because obviously you're soul charging every turn. But you have to do that with everything. And that has the additional effect of when this unit attack hits, you can soul blast 6 and counter blast 4 and you draw 5 cards. Um, I hardly pull this bit off, but just being able to look at the top card of my deck every single turn is usually strong enough. <laughs> and getting the 4k means that you're always hitting no matter what your opponent's vanguard is. Very good. Next is a card that we wish we had a few more of, which is um, Sakuya. Um, so during your turn, if your hand has two or more cards on Vanguard Circle, this unit gains 4k. And the bottom effect, which is quite unique, um, when placed you can return all of your rearguards to your hand. Something to watch out for this, if you have three cards and your hand is at seven, you will lose a card because you're, you can only have up to nine cards maximum. Um, however, being able to call Kokua, call your other 7k grade one, which looks at the top early game, and then place this, you get to add them back to hand and use those very useful effects again. Um, it's a very nice first ride if you are trying to go for the CEO effect. Um, again, one of the issues with the CEO effect is that you need four counter blasts for this. Um, and you have a grade two, which is on hit, draw one. And you have the next grade three, which counter blasts a lot, which is, in my, I believe, to be the best budget grade three, um, as it's a double rare. So it has the, it's um, Apollon. Effect of Apollon is when this unit attack hits on Vanguard, you can counter blast two to draw two cards, and you get to return a card from your hand to your deck. This is brilliant. Drawing two cards and then being able to return any card of your choice. So you could return a heal, a crit, any of your triggers that you decide. Um, but also drawing the two cards, you could draw PG, a very useful card. You can end up, I usually draw at least one PG using this effect, which is nice. As another effect of this, it has the rear guard ability of when this unit attack hits, you can counter blast two to draw a card. Drawing an extra card is great. Again, when I draw Sentinel, that's all that particularly matters when you're using skills like this. You want to draw the PGs. Um, you want to have as many as you can, unless you're playing against the same deck, because um, <laughs> then they're useless, really. Um, only downside of this is that it's counter blast heavy. Obviously, we don't have much counter charge apart from Nova Grappler, who has like 19 cards. Um, so, yeah, it's a very good grade 3. It's a grade 3 that I was like using for a very long time before I got my CEO on my Therasus. Um, so, yeah. Another great three in the deck is just simply um, Meteor Break Rizard. It's um, when it attack, when a unit attacks, um, you can counter boss one to gain 3k until the end of the battle. Magic numbers, you gotta get there. Having a 13k attack of grade three is pretty good. It's fine. And then we're running this one, which is Omni Science Madonna. Um, right now, we're only really running this because we don't have enough of the other grade threes, but it's still an okay effect. Um, it helps you filter, so its effect is Vanguard or Rearguard, when this unit attack hits, you may discard a card from your hand, if you do, you draw a card. Um, again, filter your hand, you might discard a grade 3 that you're not going to be using and draw a PG, very useful. Um, yeah, there is a side effect of this, if you've stacked the top of your deck, um, and you know that it's a trigger, you do not want to attack with this Rearguard, or this Rearguard, or your grade 2, because you'll end up drawing a card and you don't want to draw your trigger which can mess up your um, attack phases sometimes. Especially because these rearguards, they don't, they don't have to hit vanguard. So if you're using the kill grade twos, it's like you've missed a draw, kind of, because you're not using the effect to draw current. It's a side effect, however, it's still pretty fine. Alrighty, so let's take a look at some of the other cards that people have been running. So, as I've mentioned, people usually run dark, four dark cap. Um, it's a fine option, if you choose to. One card that you might run into is Luckbird. When placed, soul blast 2 to draw a card. Um, 
It's a fine card. I don't like having a 5k grade 1 on my deck. I think it's a bit lacking because if I have a 7k grade 1, then um, it boosts my CEO, CEO Amaterasu for 21, which is a magic number. Um, magic number meaning that even if they get one trigger on the first attack, I'm still hitting. Um, however, drawing a card when you place the card is great. Alrighty, let's take a look at some other ones. As I mentioned before, Gemini is just an AK vanilla. People run this. Um, I've seen a few lists running this guy. When this unit, when this unit attacks, uh, you can still boss one to gain 3k until the end of the turn. It's not that good. Um, ah, onto grade twos. So some of the cards that people have been running are Promised Daughter. Uh, Promised Daughter, when she attacks Vanguard or Rayguard, you may discard a card from your hand to gain 5k until the end of battle. It's a great effect. Um, getting those magic numbers, especially with a booster, is just brilliant. However, I don't like the idea of discarding a card from my hand. Um, usually, I like to just manage my resources a little bit more. I don't particularly go for like one big blast turn. I usually just try and slowly grind out my games when I'm using this deck. Um, and some people are running Red Eyes just to try and Soul Charge more towards the CEO Amaterasu skill. So Red Eyes effect is um, when this unit attack hits you, Soul Charge 1, Fang God or Rear God effect. Um, yeah, so some other grade 3s you might run into is the um, Sphinx, which is counter last to just gain 4k. It's fine. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it I believe, and apart from the elementals. If you're playing against VP Farmer OTT, you're going to see this card a lot. <laughs> Very good, yes. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Um, as I've said to some of the subscribers that have asked questions, what I would mainly run, if you're lacking and you've only got great like, double rares and stuff like that, this is a brilliant grade 3 to run off. Um, there are a few decks on the forums. If you go to deck build, uh, to like cards, and then deck forums, you can look through there. There are quite a few there. Um, a lot of these are commons and rares, so it's not particularly difficult. I find it difficult to find like the double rares, so Maiden of Libra was like a big issue for me. I still only have one of the Sakuya, um, so it has been a bit difficult for me, but I've just been only farming um, um, Misaki when it comes to getting the actual resources. So without further ado, let's play one competitive game. So let's take a look at where we've come. So it's been a day, I believe, since we've played Nova Grappler and we've only had a little bit of gameplay in. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm only particularly going for next season because I do want to try. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen because that guy who's the, um, the Kagero player, who's currently ranked number one, must only play the game 24-7. I swear he never sleeps. Um, but I, I really do want to try and push next season. I'm going to try and see how high I can get. I would be happy with top 100, but I'm a very competitive person and of course I'm going to try and go way higher than that. So we're currently at Legend 9 with 18 points, which isn't terrible, to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, let's see what we can do. Go into a rank fight. Let's see how this goes. So we've got Haha, <laughs> Tom go Pew Pew, because that's what Tom do. Let's see, we've got the um, Lozenge Magus um, sleeves on this. We've got a mix between the promo Lozenge Magus starter, and we've got the um, OG starter as the sleeves. So hopefully we don't go against a VP farmer, because if we do, I'm going to have to skip ahead. Let's see what we can do. We might go against Grand Blue, because there's been a lot of Grand Blue going along. Um, tell me in the comments what you think of Grand Blue, and um, how it's going for you. Have you pulled anything you like? Alrighty, we're playing against Jaxus, and he says he is deck experimenting. Well, I hope it goes very well for him. I hope he loses, but I hope it goes very well for him. <laughs> Alrighty, so he's got the Legend sleeves on, so we know what he's doing. Alrighty, righty. So I don't particularly enjoy keeping the grade 3s in hand at the start because the triggers. Um, so I usually put them all back. But having um, two grade 2s and a grade 1 is usually what I go for, both in real life Vanguard and... Okay. It's not a bad hand. Two Kokua, um, a 10k vanilla, a grade 2. Okay. So we've got a grade 3 that we can use. Um, so we're going to ride the Kokua. I'm going to call Magus behind because we want to be able to boost it next turn. Don't forget that we get to use Cocoa skill on Vanguard. So we're going to put this to the bottom. I'm actually going to call the other one because I'm trying to fish for a draw trigger to maybe put on top of my deck. Alrighty, so we'll put Dark Cat at the bottom. And then we're just going to end turn. So it's not a very bad um, turn one effect. The Cocoa ability is very nice. Um, I used to call it Coco, but I believe it is Cocoa. I might be saying it wrong the entire time and I could just be incorrect. Um, Alright, so we're going to ride Romario. Mario? Romario. Yeah, sorry, I was word stumbling. So, I'm going to be posting a Grand Blue deck soon. Um, 
I'm working on it. I'm currently four tripwires away from fully having everything in the deck, um, which I've been complaining to to a lot of my friends, but in reality that's pretty good right now. Um, so he's going to attack with his Romario, and I don't think he's boosted because he doesn't want to get more cards in his um, grave. Let's see what we get from our damage check. Alrighty, damn, that's a bit annoying. We lose one of our cocoa uh, chocolates. Yeah, chocolates. Chocolate with my words. Now we just got to wait for him to his end his turn. There we go. Alrighty, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually ride our 10k vanilla. Let's see what we can do. So what I like to do is I like to call both of my grade twos down. I want defensive because I'm trying to slow it down. I want a grindy game as much as I can. Um, so just looking at what he's got right now. So if we go this here and this here, what we're hoping is that we grab a trigger from um, our drive check. So we're gonna just swing for the eight. Um, the reason that it's fine by itself is because we knew that, oh, unfortunate that he got a trigger there actually. That's probably shut down our entire turn unless we get a trigger here, which is a bit of a punish. Let's see what we can do. We have used, yes, because we used chocolate, we knew, uh, Cocoa, sorry. Because we used Cocoa, we knew that we'd put some of the normal cards to the bottom of the deck. So we knew there'd be a high possibility, but it's all luck at the end of the day. So we're going to use Lozenge Maker's Effect to shuffle it back into the deck, adding a heal to our deck and drawing one card. The card we got off it is another of the Mochas, which is nice. Um, we'll pass it over to my bonus 10. Let's see what we can do. I'm very excited to look at more Grand Blue gameplay. Um, I want to know what you guys are running for your trigger lineup. So I've seen quite a few lists running 9 draw. Um, I've seen lists running 5 draw, 4 stand. I've seen lists running 5 draw, 4 crit, four, 5 crit, 4 draw, etc. A variant of this. Alrighty, so it's not a very complete deck from the looks of it because I usually have seen that Greed Shades only ran um, when they don't have all of their triple res unless he's not running the Ghost Ship, which is a very strong card. Speak of the devil. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm not really too sure why he's called the ghost ship in the back. Um, I'm not 100% certain. We do know he has one night mist though, which is very nice. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to attack into it. I don't really want to because he's going to get the effect of it off. But at the end of the day, I don't really have much of a choice. So hopefully we only take one damage from this attack. Let's see what he mills. Alrighty, so he's got a samurai guy. Yeah, samurai spirit. And he's got one of his negromar. Which is fine. Did he get a trigger there? That's it. Did he? No, he didn't. So we lose a Tom, which is un very unfortunate as we only have two, so now we really have to hope that we draw another one. Um, usually it's our Wincon, but now we have two Counterblasts, so we'll be able to use the effect of the Apollon, um, which is nice. Alrighty, so again, I'm going to call two Grade Twos instead of choosing to call um, the Grade Three here. The reason I'm doing this is because I want more defense against this. I want to grind as much as possible. He only has three cards in hand, so it's something I'm fine with. I can call this grade two by itself, because he has two grade twos that are um, just 8k, which is fine. So I'm going to call this here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm still going to use this rear to attack his rear and this, because I run crits. So if I get one crit, I'll push him to four. Alrighty, let's see what we can do here. It's nice that we're going to get the extra draws from Apollon here, so maybe we can get a trigger, please? Draw trigger, very nice. Um, give us more stuff to put back with Apollon. Put that grade 2 back if we choose to. But I'll probably put this grade 3 back into my deck, because I believe I've got them set as heal triggers. Okay, so he's just got off another draw trigger, and then we're going to use Apollon's effect. So the counter plus 2, draw 2 cards. Oof, they're pretty unfortunate. So, um, ooh, this is a difficult choice, actually. I think I always put the heal back. Heal is always right, I believe. Now we have five heals still on our deck, I believe. We have lost quite a few of our other triggers, so we actually... One thing I'm a bit frustrated about is this is um, how the trigger info is set out, is so it's like open knowledge, so what's been seen, whereas... So it shows you what yours are, but in reality I have two triggers in hand, so I have a draw and a crit in hand. So instead of having one crit in deck, uh, three crits in deck, I have two actually, and I have three two draws left. Um, that's a bit unfortunate for my guy. He's rode the 8k grade 3. Um, shouldn't affect him too much, to be completely honest. Um, but we'll have a look. See what he can do. He's going to call a card from his grave. Yeah, ghost ship's going to go off. Now the question here is, is he going to use Night Mist? I don't see why he would when he can just push the um, ghost ship forward. Yeah, and he might have a booster for him in his deck. In his hand, sorry. 
have a drink of water. Let's see what he can do. So he's just having a little thinky think here. Still having to think. Big think. Okay, he's going to use the Night Spirit skill. And he gives the power to his vanguard. Okay, interesting. He should be fine, because he can just attack with the AK grade 2 into my AK grade 2. So the only issue with Thoros against Grand Blue is that they have a lot of um, abilities to gain the grade 2s back with Night Mist. So we're going to have to... Only having 3 attacks per turn, which a lot of decks do right now anyway. Let's see. Hopefully he didn't get any triggers. Nice. Very nice. And we saw a 1 PG go there, I believe. Alrighty. So we lose... Or, um, Circle Magus. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't remember her name at the time of that. Alrighty, so we draw another grade 2, which is nice. Um, we don't need to ride, so we'll just ride skip. So we're in the exact same situation as last turn, apart from we can't use Apollon's skill this turn. So, but this turn, my grade 2 is 11, but it doesn't matter. He has rear guards. Um, then I'm going to have to attack, so we do this. Um, I always get a bit nervous when a card power can change so but it's fine 11 and 11 get rid of that ghost ship and then maybe we can get a crit maybe even a heal maybe we have five heals in deck draw trigger okay i'll take it um I'd rather try and push one of his pgs out right now i don't really like drawing that crit though i believe that's we've got one crit left in our deck Let's see he's he's run through two heals um he's got a lot of triggers left in his deck unless they're in his hand but I don't think they are because he wouldn't ride the 8k grade 3 if that was the case. Especially the heal trigger. So let's see what he can do. Over to you, Chief. So, while my opponent's just doing stuff like this, ride phase, main phase, I like to look and think about what I'm possibly going to be doing next turn. So, I know that I'm going to call this to rear, and I'm probably going to call this to rear. And I should be okay with my PG still staying in my hand this turn. I'm hoping that I can use a pollen's effect next turn. Um, and we, I, I could just imagine getting a heal trigger now and it not going off because we still have five left in deck. So I feel like if we take a damage, we might actually get a heal. Unless he's got a lot of boosters, none of us stuff's gonna hit. Okay, he's got a samurai, so that Night Mist can attack my 8k, that can attack that, and then he can hit for 15. Um, we don't, we haven't seen it, so currently we might think that it's actually a nine draw list. Um, he's getting very unlucky, to be completely honest. Um, let's have a peek. And to be honest, I kind of hope that we don't get a heal here, because... Okay, so there's one of his draws. So yeah, it's definitely looking like a 9 draw list, this list. Alrighty. Oh, but he gave power to rear, so it might have stands, actually. Okay. Interesting. So, he's gave power to the rear guard. Most people just show it on the vanguard if they don't run anything that um, stops it. Okay, we didn't get a heal. Nice. Hopefully we don't draw one, because we want to be hitting those effects now. Um, this is where the heal trick is going to be really strong. Stand and draw. No healed again. Perfect. So we're going to ride skip here. We are going to call the grade 2 because, again, we just want to be able to defend. And um, because we don't have another grade 2, we're going to call this grade 3. And we are going to go to battle. So, one thing that I'm hoping is because my effect here is going to go off, I'm praying I don't draw a heal trigger. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're just going to discard one of these grade 3s. We didn't draw a heal. Very good. Very nice. Perfect. So the chances of us drive checking a heal trigger here are very high. So we have 17 cards in deck and five of them are heals. So yeah, we're gonna get a pollen's effect off after this as well. So we'll go to drive checks. Cocoa, no triggers, wow. So what might happen now is because we're gonna use a pollen's effect, we might actually draw some of our heals. So we'll be able to put one back if we do, if that's the case. Um, but we'll be seeing. Okay, so we draw one of the heals. So we're gonna put the heal back anyway. Um, Keep the draw in the hand, the CEO Amaterasu. Um, she's not very useful at this case because I've used quite a lot of my counter blast, as I mentioned. There are times where you can play the game specifically grindy so that you can use her effect. I just feel like it takes quite a long time. So I usually write her to look at the top card of my deck. I might end up doing that because I don't have any more counter blast for Apollon. Um, so we still have five heals in our deck um, with 16 cards, and we are on turn like eight maybe, which is. Bowser. <laughs> Crazy. But I don't actually... Did he? I don't think he's had any active heals either. He might have drew them. Ok, 
Okay, so he's gonna call Ghost Ship or Mario. Okay, so he's running the cutlass, the um, bouncing cutlasses. So what he's gonna do? He's gonna Soul Blast two to draw one card, and then he's gonna use the effect of the Night Mist to counter boss one and retire the card and call him. Yep. It's a very nice combo effect. I don't particularly like the Dancing Cutlass because you don't get to choose what cards you Soul Blast. If you're running the um, the Spirit Exceed, then you can lose the Samurai Spirit from your soul, which is very annoying. So you're probably going to attack Vanguard first, then Rearguard. Okay. Alright, so he gets one of his heals. He only has through one left in deck now. Alrighty. It's unfortunate that he gets a heal there because you really wanted to push a PG from his hand. Because we only have one in hand, which is again very unlucky. Let's see what we get here. Maybe a draw. No trigger. Damn. On a bright side, we might be able to double heal next turn. Because <laughs> he's only at four. Alrighty. So it should be coming over to me now. Let's take a peek. Alrighty, so we draw a dark cat. I want to let him have the dark cat draw though. So this is part of it. I don't think I actually do because everything's already hitting anyway. Do I ride the Amaterasu as well? I don't want a soul charge. So I'm going to ride skip here. I'm going to call my grade 2. But I think I'm actually going to leave it as is. <sighs> How many PGs do I have left? Two PGs. What are the chances that I draw a PG from my dark cat? Quite high. Here we go. We draw another dark cat. Oh no. Keep my opponent resources though. Let's see if we can draw a PG. Damn, we draw a heal trigger from it. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to call the Magus here. Because we want to put that back in the deck. Hopefully 6 damage. <laughs> deck 6 damage heals, man. The game is interactive and fun. So we've still got one crit in deck, so we might be able to push a PG here. But we want to at least hit one heal, otherwise this is probably game. Alright, so we are going to do it. Hopefully we don't draw a draw. Oh, we drew a heal trigger. Oh, we're getting punished so much this game. Let's see what we can do. No trigger. No trigger again! Wow! That's unbelievable. And he gets another draw trigger. Unbelievable. Alrighty, my guy. Over to you, boss. We draw another heal. Oh, what are the chances? That's oh, heartbreaking to play. So we've lost two heals out of our five. We've went from a very, very high chance of six damage healing to quite a bit lower. Um, if we don't hit this, we've had zero active heals this game. We drew them. <laughs> Which isn't what OTT is supposed to do. We're supposed to draw cards, but we're not supposed to draw the heals. Alright, so he's going to ride Baskirk just for the power, I believe. So we do have three cards in hand, so he might think that we have PGs, but it doesn't matter because he's going to try and push them from us anyway. More grade twos. Damn, Dark Hat's giving him those resources as well. Very unfortunate. Best case scenario, we six damage heal, he gets no triggers, and we top deck Tom. We need a miracle, basically. Alright, so there's Samurai. No triggers. Hi, Choppy. Alrighty, pray with us, guys. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Uh, no! There goes the Tom. Wrong order. Next card was definitely a heal trigger. Ah, uh, I can't believe that. We got no heal triggers that game. But it happens. It's just one of those things you can't really avoid. Um, we're still in Legend 9. It's a good game at the end of the day. Um, thank you for the game, my guy. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this. If you guys have enjoyed the deck, then let me know in the comments section that you've enjoyed it. Again, I'm sorry that I lost, but so many, so much that you can do. This is how the game is. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. If there's anything that you guys specifically want to watch, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, I'll get right to it. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.